Sharing our stories usually is very challenging because it's never easy to talk about yourself. You would feel that you're trying to leave an impression, not sure if it's always a good one when, it, when we come from a region that is so challenging to talk about. So I will take you guys back to when I think my story started. Uh, a seven-year-old Luna in Beirut, born at the end of the Civil War in 1990. I had no clue what the world was about. I didn't really know what I had to do in this life, but I remember that I was born and I just listened to my parents talk on and on about a war that had just finished and how lucky I was that I wasn't a part of it. So my father and I used to go walk every now and then, and we used to live by the seashore. So this was a privilege in Beirut because it was such a crowded city. Um, we used to take a walk in the afternoon, sometimes in summer, and sometimes even in winter. Now, I remember, and one of my most vivid memories of those walks is that some, sometime when I was at around six or seven years old, we were just walking down the street, and I just wanted to stop for one second, and I just looked at this building, and I looked back at my father. So he froze for a bit, I noticed something different about the building. I noticed the flag that was not the flag of my country. And my dad immediately instructed me in French. On ne regarde pas, on marche, on continue. We do not look, we move forward and we continue. I later learned that in my own country, this building was used by the Syrian army to torture, arrest and extract information from Lebanese citizens. Any citizen who dares to speak out against the regime and against the government that was not even in my own country. Syria, Syria and the Syrian government was at the time a major political influencer in Lebanon. The Syrian army had been in Lebanon through the civil war and it had played a lot of roles. So politics was immediately and directly associated with Syria. It was the type of post-war influence that the Syrian government practiced directly in Lebanon. And I lived my childhood right next to that building. And it took me years to understand what that building meant. So my interest in Syria started at a very young age. I was a Lebanese kid whose parents would not allow out of the house alone because of a detention center that was located minutes away. I couldn't even walk to my neighbor's house alone. They were always terrified. I was a child of war, a war that I had not lived, but that influenced every part of my life, even though it was, it was over as I was born. So the interest remained with me uh, through big symbolic moments. One of those big moments was the assassination of our own Prime Minister, Rafiq Hariri, who was also assassinated by the Syrian regime. So that influence was still in our country, and I was still a child, I was still a teenager. I had no idea what the country was going through or what even an assassination means. But we knew, and I had heard from my family, that Lebanon has changed forever at that moment. I did not at that time understand the politics of the sect really or what it means even to be from a certain sect or from a certain religion. Because you see, I don't come from a religious family. I come from a diverse background. So when I like to go to church, I go to church. When I like to do Ramadan traditions, I could do them. And if I woke up and I wanted to be an atheist, my parents would agree with me. Just do whatever you want, discover. And I feel lucky and privileged that I was uh, brought up that way. But that is not the case for those exploiting our differences in Lebanon at all. And not all of the people were able to reach that amount of freedom. So in the wake of the assassination, I was exposed to my very first protest as a teenager, and it was the Cedar Revolution. It was aimed to highlight how the influence of the Syrian regime in Lebanon had grown and was still there and had crossed all the lines of direct interference. I lived through many major events after that, the 2006 war, by the, uh, by the Israelis on Lebanon, and many major protests. But the slogans of the 2005 protests remained in my mind. And I wanted to do more than just protest. So I wrote. I went to my diary, and I started writing and writing and writing. And ironically enough, my diary did not include names of crushes or of boys that I liked or of or an anger at my parents. It included questions about what this life is about. What am I doing here? What is this country? I had so much hate. I did not understand how I could change a country that I don't feel that I belong to. Because I grew up looking at a flag that was not even my country's. 
we were worn, we were uh, sorry, we were worn out and we were also warned by the fact that even carrying your Lebanese flag could be a crime. I was once going back to a protest uh, to my house and we were told that we should hide our flag. And that was the moment that I just wanted to do something different. I carried that sensation with me as I grew up in taking decisions of what would I like to be? What does it mean to have to hide your own country's flag while you're walking back home from a protest? And I wanted to be a person who documents injustice. Not because I've been through so much. I was an observer up until that moment, but I saw a lot of injustice on TV, within protests, among my friends. There was a lot of fear, and I wanted to talk about that. I wanted to tell the Arab world, and I wanted to tell the whole world also, that there's something happening, not only in Lebanon, but in the region. In other words, I'm a journalist, as simple as this term could be. I would like to document, to write, to take pictures, and whenever I see something wrong happening, I don't think of the consequences on myself. I just want to let it out and tell the people about it. This is how I became uh, a witness, a participant and a documenter in the 2019 protests in Lebanon. These protests ironically started after the government decided to uh, imply taxes on our WhatsApp calls. So as if Lebanon needed anything else, any more corruption, people took down the streets. I was abroad when this happened. I was emotionally tired from Lebanon. It hadn't been given me any opportunities, so I decided to leave for a while. And then this happened. And the slogans were, Killon yani killon. all of them means all. We need them to go. We don't like them. We don't like the sectarian regime. We want to change. Our prime minister resigned. And I decided that it's time for me to really start documenting this instead of just sitting for the first two weeks abroad, not knowing how I could actually change something. And even though the sectarian structure of the country is still there, and it had remained for months, but protesters were still there, were still in the streets for the first weeks, and were still motivated as ever. And here, I went back to Lebanon, and the shift started. First two weeks were about some violence and some protests, but then the protests became a way of life. You would think that there are parties, picnics, cultural activities, events, and a vibrant art scene. Knowing that I had been abroad, I felt so helpless. But once I was back to Lebanon, I held my camera and I had to talk to every single person. I was spending hours in the streets and everyone was asking me, what are you exactly documenting? You're not publishing all of it. I told them that this is something that I'm doing now, and I know that I will use in the future, because for the first time in years, the eyes of the world are in Lebanon, this tiny little country that is always influenced by others. There aren't many words to describe the feeling of complete belonging and being proud of your community as it stands for its rights. It gives me goosebumps by just talking about this, because this is what the sense of belonging means for a person who had for so long felt that they do not belong to their country. I wish I could convey to you simply, but the only words that come to mind, and I am still up until this moment, high on freedom and on hope for my country. Sadly, because this is not only a beautiful story about positives, it comes with negatives as well. The protest took a wrong turn, and despite tremendous efforts to keep the nonviolence and peace, Violence took root and spread out. I was crushed, and it took me a lot of time to be able to adjust to the fact that this is more than just violence and that we in Lebanon will have to face all of the consequences together. People were arrested, people were water cannoned, and people were thrown tear gas at. They were targeted by all means. The army even went to the streets, established checkpoints to try and prevent protesters from gathering. But our state underestimates our creativity and resilience because we managed to still protest regardless of all of that. And this one goes to our state because I tell them that we are smarter. <laughs> Although the situation is not good today in Lebanon, banks are sometimes closing, we have a lot of trouble looming, our environment is not at its best stage, and also we have a virus that is spreading and we don't know how to control it because our hospitals are not very capable. Citizens are suffering in brief, but they are also opening their homes and their doors. They're giving free food. 
they're helping others, they're volunteering, they're, they're working on international and national campaigns, and I don't really know where they are getting this strength from because it has been an exhausting road for them. And we know that it will be a long road for change, but it's a start. And I tell you now that even if Lebanon disappears from the headlines for a while, don't think that we don't have something prepared around the corner, because this time people are really insisting on making a difference. It will not end, and it will continue, and people will continue to be on the streets. As for me, I will return to Lebanon yet again. I will write stories, not as a frustrated teenager who finds many things to dislike about her country, but as a Lebanese journalist who is proud of her fellow citizens who are demanding their rights. And now I have to answer myself for the question that I have been asking. Does sharing my story with you matter? When I received this invitation, I really questioned myself. But right now, I really think that it does. So thank you.